Hello, my name is Peter. I'm a member of the Amazon S3 product management team. I'm really excited today to talk to you about a new feature called Amazon S3 multi-region access points. Let's go ahead and get started. So why did we build Amazon S3 multi-region access points? Well, it's really for operating and connecting applications across multiple AWS regions to multiple S3 buckets. Traditionally, Amazon S3 has been very regional based. You'd connect to a specific bucket in a specific region with your application, and if you ever needed to change that, that was a manual change to your application. Now with multi-region access points, we have the ability to operate across Amazon regions and give you the ability to have a single global host name as an entry point for your application and clients to use and operate across multiple AWS regions. Finally, the other reason why we built multi-region access points beyond just operational resiliency improvements is also performance. We now can use the Amazon Global Accelerator Global Network to remotely and securely route your requests, whether they're VPC-based or internet-based, to the bucket with the lowest latency, regardless of which region it's located in. So we think this is going to be very exciting uh, for customers to look at and to, to consider. So let's go ahead and take a look at how multiple uh, regions can be brought together under a single global host name known as a multi-region access point. So today we have the ability to then choose which buckets we'd like to include in the multi-region access point through a, a new unique global host name that will be automatically generated through the multi-region access point setup and configuration. And we'll show you what that looks like here today. And now we have the ability then once this global host name is created to go ahead and operate across regions by giving that global host name to your clients and applications. Once those clients start making requests, reads and writes to that global host name, they'll be automatically accelerated onto the AWS Global Accelerator Network and then routed to the bucket with the lowest latency. These can be either VPC-based requests for your applications that are already running in AWS today, or they can be internet-based requests that are coming in and on-ramping to the AWS Global Accelerator Network to the bucket with the lowest latency. So you get the best of both worlds, whether it's a VPC-based request that is originating in a, a VPC-based application or internet-based request, again, for reads or writes, puts or gets. And it's going to leverage that global footprint and global presence of the Global Accelerator Network to on-ramp those requests. Now, when we configure a multi-region access point, we'll do that centrally, and we can also optionally choose to centrally configure the replication between the data for the data between all of the buckets behind a multi-region access point. We can choose to replicate some of the data, all of the data, none of the data, and still get the benefits of the dynamic global routing to the bucket with the lowest latency with the multi-region access point. So when we create a multi-region access point, really the unique feature here is the new global host name. You're going to be able to choose one bucket per region. A bucket can be a part of more than one region, but once you've created and selected your buckets to create the multi-region access point, you'll see a new s3-global.amazonaws.com domain for this global host name. And that's really the unique piece of the multi-region access point is that global host name. So the replication can then be configured optionally once the multi-region access point has been configured. And then requests, as we mentioned, are then automatically routed and accelerated across the AWS Global Accelerator Network to the bucket with the lowest latency behind the multi-region access point. So let's take a look at what that looks like here and configure a multi-region access point. So we start with our create multi-region access point. We've come to the ability here to see which name we'd like to give our multi-region access point. There'll be two names, one that you'll generate and then one that will be assigned uh, to guarantee uniqueness for the, the name of the multi-region access point. You then can choose which buckets you'd like to include in the multi-region access point. Again, one bucket per region. And if you do select more than one bucket from the same region, an appropriate message will be displayed to let you know that you need to select one and only one bucket per region. You'll use the same type of IAM language and attach an IAM policy to this multi-region access point to configure the access controls. And then you'll see the multi-region access point completing successfully on top of the buckets that you've selected. And then you'll have the ability to choose what replication options you'd like to enable. Again, this is completely optional for the replication piece. You can have existing buckets with existing replication, or you can centrally configure the, the replication rules for all of the buckets and all of the uh, source and destination buckets. 
Now, when we look at the scope of the replication, there'll be the same rules that you're used to today with cross-region replication. Do you want to replicate all of the data in the bucket, some of the data in the bucket, just a tag to select the data in the bucket, and then you'll choose the options for how to replicate the data. Do you want to replicate encrypted objects? Do you want to replicate to a different storage class to lower your overall storage costs on one of your destination buckets? And then the replication options to control how the replication is going to be configured with such options as replication time control for an SLA-based replication standard of 99.99% of your objects replicated in 15 minutes or less, uh, replication metrics to monitor the replication progress, the replication of bidirectional sync, as well as the option to replicate deletion markers or not. So these are the same options that you get with S3 replication today, the difference is the multi-region access point configuration lets you do that for multiple buckets, all from a central location. Once those rules have been configured, they're deployed out to all of the source and destination buckets. And once that is completed, you'll see a replication summary map indicating how the replication has been configured, whether it's directional, bi-directional, one-to-many. And once that is completed, you can begin monitoring your replication process here if you've enabled the replication metrics for those rules. So when we look at multi-region access points, it really takes us to a new level for operating across multiple AWS regions. This capability gives you a new global host name to give to your clients, and this provides improved operational resiliency across AWS regions, and also provides a performance benefit for both VPC and internet-based requests, since we are on-ramping those requests across the AWS Global Accelerator Network. We will dynamically route those requests to the bucket with the lowest latency, and then if there ever is a need, failover is seamless with no additional configuration options or settings required to be configured by you. This technology also works with existing S3 features such as cross-region replication, multi-destination replication, bi-directional replication, as well as the replication time control and S3 private link. Thank you very much for watching our video. My name is Pete Imming. I'm a member of the Amazon S3 product management team. And we hope you found multi-region access points interesting. So please visit our multi-region access point feature page.